Welcome to the show. Yet again, we have uh, an interesting uh, person with us from our industry. And he's none other than Nandu Kumar from Prominence, India. Uh, hi, Nandu. Welcome to the show. Hi, Karen. How are you doing? All good, man. How are you? So good. I'm sorry, I'm going to call you Nandu and Nand, not Nand Kumar. It's Nand Kumar is too long for me. Yeah, everybody calls me Nandu in my family. So, you know, you're all a family basically, so you can call me. <laughs> That's good to know. So, uh, it seems you have lost weight. Is it true? I think I've lost uh, close to nine, nine kgs, I think. Yeah, I've lost. Wow. It seems you've done a lot of work at home. Family so, has made you do a lot of physical work, clearly. Yeah, now, I feel running a factory is much more easier, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not surprised about that. So, Nandu, let's start this conversation with you. And I'm sure by the end of it, all the people who are watching us, they're going to know a lot about you because your story is still unknown in so many ways for a lot of people. And probably in this conversation, I'll also get to know a lot about you at the same time. Sure, sure. Love to do that. Uh, so, Nandu, how does it feel to be born with a silver spoon? Uh, Karan, uh, I don't know where you got this, you know, uh, uh, idea from, but, you know, I was not born with a silver spoon. I still, I don't have a silver spoon, you know. And uh, we had a very uh, humble beginning, you know. I was, myself and my brother, I have an elder brother. We both were born in a small hut. Right? That's where uh, we started a journey. And with uh, dad's, uh, you know, hard work and perseverance, and with God's grace, you know, we are at this stage right now. And still, I don't have a silver spoon, you know, for your answer. It's easier for you to say that. But uh, I'm really surprised because... So, you're trying to tell me that the 1000 crores steel empire that's been set up, that's been done in one generation by your father. Well, that's crazy because I thought a 1000 crore empire in one generation, only politicians were capable of doing that, no one else. So, <laughs> that, that's for me, that's the biggest surprise. It is a step-by-step -step process, you know. He started his career in a very, very small, humble way and uh, slowly he evolved in a couple of industries and uh, finally came to steel and uh, it's been 30 years now, right? so it was a massive uh, hard work which has been gone into it, and all we are doing is trying to you know keep up that pace. I'm sure, but this interview is going to be about you, so we're going to talk a lot more about you in that case. So Nandu, you happen to be from Erode, a, a small district in Tamil Nadu. I mean, obviously now it's a lot more known and more in our industry specifically, but. Uh, and from there, you were one of the first ones, I'm assuming, who ended up going abroad for your education. Uh, how did that happen to you? Uh, I would say it is more of an accident rather than a planning, you know. So, uh, to be honest, I was not at all prepared to, you know, go overseas. And I don't have an idea to go overseas and do my education, right? So, I was put up in a college in Chennai. And uh, some of the college had a link at the uh, university in UK. And they had a conflict. And they suddenly said, you guys, please come to UK to finish the course. And that's where, you know, it was a big shock to me. And I was totally not prepared. Then, you know, one thing led to the other and started applying for passport. The next day for the visa, the, as soon as he got the visa, then I flew to UK. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any other choice. So I need to go and complete it over there. So I just went there and stayed there for four years. Surely you. So that was going to be my next one. Uh, was it a cultural shock for you when you went there? Was it a big change for you initially? No, I would say it's not just culturally... But I was, you know, with, with a lot of friends, I went there, you know, the whole college shifted there. So a lot of friends over there with me. So in, in my house, you know, there were 11 of us. So it is a big crowd, all, you know, Indians and uh, guys I've known for, you know, almost one and a half years. So it was not, but when I go outside, yes, it is. And somewhere down the line, you know, I was not very much interested in staying back. Whenever I get a chance, I fly back to India, right? I want to come as soon as possible. The family guy Nandu is holding on to his roots and family. Well, I've known that for a very long time now. Uh, but Nandu, my biggest worry is, or the question is, how did you manage your food? I mean, who did your idlis and the dosas and the rice? How did you manage that? That's a very interesting question, right? So normally, like, you know, when you go to a college with the juniors and the seniors, you know, how they rag you, this happened to me. You know? When I went to UK, you know, my friends went ahead of me. So when I went there, you know, obviously, you know, I need to use to do the basic jobs like cutting onions, doing dishes. So I really hate the job, right? And particularly cutting onions for 11 guys, it's, it's ridiculous. And I want to come out of that. So what I did is I asked my mom how to make a few things. I made my own cooking and everybody liked it. So I thought it's a good promotion for me. Then I switched over and I became a chef 
I don't do any more dishes and these things. So Nandu loves cooking. I didn't know that part. So did, is that something which you still pursue? Is that something which you uh, did even during the lockdown time? Yeah, I, I really loved doing, you know, uh, cooking. Especially I had a, a very good memory of my dad, you know, making me sit on the kitchen slab. Even this very small house. He used to make me sit on the slab and he used to make, you know, food dishes and, you know, feed us. So that was the evergreen memory for me till now. So I want to pass on the same thing to my kids as well. So now and then even, I, I think even last Sunday I made something for the kids. I love doing that, you know, I try to find some new recipes for them and cook for them. So you only love to cook or do you eat it also? I mean, you are a foodie as well? Yeah, yeah. everywhere, you know. You don't know why I took the uh, marketing role in prominence, you know. I used to try, you get the chance to travel across India, right? Taste all the street foods. The one condition which I give all my marketing, uh, uh, you know, uh, executives is that, you know, wherever I go, they need to find the right place for me. Street foods is which I love. So I go and explore things. Oh, well, you come to Delhi next time. I'll, I'll, if that's the case, I didn't know that, as I said. Uh, if that's the case, next time when you're in Delhi, you're surely in for a treat. Uh, my only worry will be you may end up having a Delhi belly. So no, we'll, not a problem. We'll not a I'm all prepared. You know, I've just already lost nine kgs, so not a worry. Perfect. Good to know that. Good to know that. Thank you for but that. We, need, we don't know about your cooking skills yet, so we need to see it to believe how true it is and how good you are there. Next gathering, next gathering, you know, let me do a couple of dishes. No, I'm good at non-vegetarians, vegetarians, excuse me. Damn it. Well, vegetarian I am, but the, my entire idea of doing this podcast is so that I can get a lot of freebies. I've got something from Mario. The idea is to get something from you and so on with other people. So my life is sorted. I'll, I'll try to make something for you. Vegetarian, definitely. I'll learn something, I'll do it for you. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. So, Nandu, uh, let's talk about, was it an obvious choice when you moved back? Uh, to India, getting into business, was it an obvious decision for you? Uh, obviously, you know, we need to, when I came back, yes, we need to get into the business. But my dad was a little different. He always used to give us our own freedom. Learn everything, you know, you make mistakes or if you succeed, it doesn't matter, you know, but it's an experience. If all of a sudden you go into your dad's business, you know, you will not get more of an exposure. So that's how he said, you know, do whatever you want. Then, you know, I chose agriculture first. So I, I love agriculture. So the first thing I've done is we had a uh, farmland. So I went there, started doing organic farming and everything. So organic farming is something, you know, which is very new to uh, uh, even India. That time it was not at all popular. It was in 2002. When I came back, you know, I just straight away went to the farm and started doing organic farming and everything. Interesting. Now I know where all the food that gets cooked in your factory is coming from. Probably it's all coming from the farmland itself. No, even in prominence, if you come next time, I think we have a lot of fruit trees around. Next time, probably, you know, we will give you a lot of fruit salads from our homegrown. See, the second freebie that I've got. I'm keeping a tab on all of that for sure right now. Uh, so, uh, clearly, it seems agriculture it was and it seems like you're still passionate about that. But I thought probably you got into the textile business also at some point of time. When did that happen? Yeah, parallelly, you know, when I was doing this agriculture, I was studying about a couple of, you know, industries to enter into. And uh, we went to textiles weaving industry. So that I've started with a few of my friends. And uh, I was there for uh, two, three years that down the line in the industry, textile industry. I was running the show. And uh, we were not able to expand in a bigger way because of the uh, restrictions with the partners and everything. So, you know, then from there, you know, I gave it to another partner of mine. And then I shifted my career into uh, UPVC industry. So basically, two businesses done. You realized you could not enter the 1000 crores uh, uh, club and that's what made you get into the UPVC side, clearly. I mean, so competitive of you competing again with your father? It's not exactly like that. See, we are two brothers. So we don't want to end up, you know, in the same industry, right? So we were parallel looking at, you know, what are the other industries we can able to enter into. And then uh, we finalized a couple of products and then one of my uncle was suggesting about the UPVC. Then we don't know anything about UPVC. We thought, okay, let us start a small way and let us try to understand the business. And that's where the UPVC whole thing came out. So before I dwell more into UPVC, um, just something which I got to know very recently, actually, and I had to make a few calls when I was just going to do this uh, chat with you. I thought, let me just get more, uh, you know, gossip. So I understand you had a love marriage also. And you guys have known, you and your wife, you've known for way too long. I think probably you got this information with any and a lot of other sources, I think. But 
but you know if we expect something you know to be like a current jogos movie with a lot of twist and turn i'm really sorry there's nothing much to add on to that because you know uh, both both our fathers are very close friends right from childhood you know i was i know them from you know from their birth so it was you know all happened when i came from uk you know we liked each other we told our parents and they were very happy about it and everything turned around well you know nothing interesting happened you know so nando you got into the fenestration industry you got into the upvc industry along with indian he happens to be the other partner and he happens to be your brother in law is that true exactly and like, indian is my more like my brother you know before i would i would never you know introduce indian as my brother in law anyway because it sounds odd to me because i've known indian from the day he is born and most of the time he is used to be at our house you know see is more like my brother you know rather than brother in law it's typically when someone asks you know his brother in law you know i think twice and he finished his mba and then we said okay let us venture into new business vertical then we started studying in the product and eventually you know i love traveling so i chose you know marketing before he selected you know then i started the marketing for an indian tech group and technical stuff the advantage jija ji has jija ji means brother in law again but in a different way because yeah so but i want to know whether um, upvc business captive or now prominence that came in dowry or rather indian came to you in dowry how did this happen which one was it's a small business there's no dowry involved on both the sides but i would say there's a common interest you know we both were young and we want to start something on our own and that's how the journey started and uh, we, the idea was to go for extrusion in the beginning itself right so but but to be honest both of us are uh, management graduates and uh, we don't know much technically the products and everything and upvc was totally new to india so we thought let us study the product for a while then you know we thought you know when two years or one and a half years we'll start extrusion you know and but apparently the product is too complicated for us and you know how it is it's more of an engineering product and took almost six, seven years for us to to start the extrusion business so uh extrusion happened yes but before that just want to understand i mean because i have known both of you for very long time since captive days because we used to work very closely with your company um i mean it's a great tag team the way the understanding is between you guys it's phenomenal and which is worry some at times i mean you guys negotiate like crazy guys also i mean you keep passing on the buck to each other and then yeah the next thing you realize bloody the supplier is like wondering what the hell happened to him i will take this as a compliment but you know i'll pass on the message to him because he is the you know master behind this negotiations i am totally totally you know not into much of negotiation he is a he is a big negotiator so whenever it comes to you know purchase or negotiation i leave it to him instead you know i am a i am a person who goes and spend into the market right rather he saves the money on the other side <laughs> fair enough now my bigger question is uh, even if it's a great tag team but i'm sure this tag team also has its own uh, share of arguments debates for good of the company also and otherwise also at times so is it the is it your wife uh, who ends up uh, bailing both of you out or one of you out in the situation no i think you know uh, union is close to me even before you know uh, i've got you know close to my wife you know from childhood days you know more of a fighting happened from i think when i was 5 6 years old with union right and also now my wife is also into the business so the fight when there is a fight she is also a part of it sometimes you know myself and indian need to both fight with him so it's, it's it's more of an understanding and and it happens you know quite every time so well i am surprised i think in that case you both are looking out for options when you are fighting against him and that could be a big big challenge i won't be surprised uh, every time every time <laughs> well clearly and surely i'm sure on that part so a uh, captive happened uh, you got into the uh, profile uh, extrusion eventually uh, as you mentioned i mean um that was something which was part of the plan but did it help you a lot because you brought in a window manufacturer perspective so in terms of the design in terms of the systems in terms of the policies a lot became better because of your past experience in the in the fabrication side as well i think that was the biggest asset for us i think see uh, we were everywhere even if we go for marketing right now we would introduce ourselves as fabricators you know that's what the main uh, you know strength for us so when we design the products uh, even from the day when we plan for extrusion till till now i know till now you know the entire strategy has been developed putting the fabricators hat right so we have fabricators idea when we design the product when we uh, started do it designing the uh, uh, 
brochures or the collaterals or when you decide on the pricing or your payment terms or your marketing strategy you know this perspective of fabricator's perspective helped us a lot so when i go and meet a fabricator and explain in a kinis zone language you know i i was more welcome sure and i think you you really put a lot of emphasis on the on the ground work because you didn't go crazily ag- aggressive in the initial days your idea was to build on a strong uh, foundation was it a very conscious decision or it was just that you couldn't find a market for yourself so actually from day one we were very particular on this see this is not a bread and butter from day one right and also we want to take it in an organic way the growth should be organic you know that's what we had in mind from the beginning so we want to create the stronger base for the organization because it's going to be a future for a long time and you know we want to create the market we want to establish the network and then we want to take it a very slow manner but so, it's been a quite a risky proposition also for you because you guys were doing great as window manufacturers i think you touched upon like 45 to 50000 you were clocking that for a while and then extrusion happened and then you completely slowly but very fast you completely shut down your manufacturing for uh, commercial use it's more now training ground yeah because uh, see when we thought of going for extrusion the first decision what we took is we should not run off fabrication plant see the problem is you know i cannot be a competitor for my own customers right so ethically also it is not right so we thought you know yes obviously there will be a small downfall in terms of your turnover in the first year but we are prepared for it we thought okay this is going to happen and let us observe it and as a policy decision we took that we are not going to compete with our own customers so i think that is a good move for also you know the customers trust you learn the customers trust as well surely it it does bring a lot of credibility and more comfort for exactly. the channel partners that that's bound to happen but it seems you are not like completely satisfied with this part also because it seems the the their dream of getting into the 1000 crore i'm sorry i'm bringing that up again and again but it seems because the kind of things you've been involved in you went ahead and got into something else also what i understand um, you doing you are working and doing some great stuff in the solid waste management as well yeah i think it was uh, you know we started with a small uh, passion you would say you know a friend of mine and i was discussing on this product and uh, with few more friends you know couple of friends we jointly started this solid waste management company where uh, what we do is uh, we do a land reclamation for the government we do something called bio mining where you know you have this legacy waste you know, the 30 40 year old dump sites we uh, recycle it resegregate it and then uh, give the barren land barren land empty back to the government and also it's a you know it's a new uh, concept which is more essential for the today's environment i guess so we started this 3 uh, 3 4 years back i'm glad i'm glad this is happening because this is actually the need of the hour right now i mean and in this lockdown a lot of us realized what all we've been doing to our environment and uh, these kind of initiatives are are a necessity and we have become a basic hygiene now and more is getting realized in these times as of now so nandu uh, this makes me understand and it's coming to me naturally is based on your various experiences as an entrepreneur and i mean do you think coming from a business family coming from an environment these conversations are uh, running big shows running big organizations uh, in terms of the exposure by default it's inherent you are part of the conversation so you understand things a little better your judgment or risk ability taking abilities are a little higher appetite is more uh because the knowledge by default it's not bookish knowledge it's all by experiences or the conversations and that's that's a lot of knowledge out there which is being used so i think it's more of a thing what we observed from our father already right so you know we all entered business very recently i wouldn't say you know we had a vast experience of you know running a show or anything but you know from my childhood days you know i've used to look at my father how he does you know uh how he treats his employees or how he uh, you know uh, treats us suppliers or how he goes and looks at the finance all these things you know that thing you know uh, was observed i think he never, my father never you know make a sit and taught us anything you know but rather you know the way he lives you know you observe from him that is one thing what which i've learned from my dad and recently you know for the past few years i've been learning quite a lot of from my elder brother as well you know he's also involved in the south african factory and couple of more other things so i've learned quite because we used to debate and discuss a lot of things over the house you know? when we most of the weekends or whenever we meet up we discuss quite a lot of stuff about the business overall all the business put together i think there are a lot of sharing is happening in the family as well 
I'm sure. I mean, as I said, these kind of knowledge uh, sharing can only happen through practical experience and not can be learned sitting in a classroom. So, Nandu, I mean, uh, it's been a great success story for you, very honestly. And it obviously would have had its own ups and downs, but otherwise it's been, it's been a good successful story for you. But even every successful story, when one looks back, there'll always be some kind of regrets um, or things you probably would want to change. Is there something about you as well? Something which you probably, if you can have a time machine and can go back and probably want to change or has a regret? Uh, I would say there are uh, suddenly two things comes to my mind, right? One, obviously, you know, when I was growing up, you know, because of my dad's, uh, he's being the first time entrepreneur in his family and the breadwinner. We didn't have opportunity to travel a lot of places with my uh, parents, you know, and uh, still that is still, that is, you know, uh, pending, you know, we couldn't able to travel as a whole family, you know, right? So that is one thing, you know, which we wanted to do long time and we've been discussing about this. And uh, the second most very important thing is, not speaking Hindi. I don't know. I don't know how to speak Hindi. I, I don't know language Hindi. You know, that's the biggest problem which I face right now. Being present across India and meeting all the fabricators and having translators, you know, with me, and that is really, really difficult. You know, <laughs> that is one thing I really regret till now. Uh, not knowing Hindi has become has got a new uh, meaning, at least as far as beyond windows. This this podcast is concerned. We've had Mario saying the same thing, and we don't know. And in Udma meetings, you know, most of the times, you know, after the meetings and everything, well, this thing happens to me and Mario, you know, all, all will be talking in Hindi and myself and Mario will be looking at each other. <laughs> well, these stories, as, as I said, I don't know how to put that and uh, that can actually have different meanings for everyone. Uh, but what you just talked about the regret, uh, I mean, I'm assuming this lockdown would have done a lot of good that way in terms of spending time with the family, um, uh, just doing other things which you always wanted to do. So lockdown in some ways would have been good for you? I would say completely it was good for me, you know. Uh, yes, obviously it has its own uh, downfalls in terms of business and the other social impacts, right? But uh, putting those things apart, we had a great time with the family, you know. I uh, spent enough time with my kids, with my parents and, you know, most of the days I used, you know, a lot of days I used to cook and also to escape from the other, you know, washing or you know cleaning the house i think no i took the actually i took the same strategy of going into the kitchen right so then i started making dishes and everything and playing games with the kids and had a lot of time to discuss with father and a lot of things you know it was totally fun and when i want to come back you know it was like more of a you know a, a little uh, more of a sadness in the house you know when you want to come back to factory and everything like like how you used to be you know childhood days when you go to hostel and then come back home and they go back again well, yeah, the advantages of being a privileged one and all of us are and something which we need to be very thankful to the exactly. Almighty for that part also. At the same time. But I completely agree this lockdown, there is a lot to take away than to be worried about monetary things. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll earn that back for sure in future. I don't think there could be any two, two ways on that part. Exactly. Uh, but Nandu, uh, something else also which I would want to touch upon is... Uh, your passion for photography, wildlife photography. I mean, it's very something which is not very really known to people also. So is, it, is it something which you do primarily just for your own comfort? How does it work for you? I think, you know, I start, started liking this photography when I was in UK and I used to take this camera and take the pictures of my friends and everything. And when my daughters are born, you know, I've just brought new camera to just to capture the moments. You know, I would love to capture the lively moments. So those things started as a small, you know, passion and it created a crazy hobby, it converted into a crazy hobby, you could say, you know. And at a point of time, we used to travel across a lot of places and a couple of countries, you know, to go and, you know, capture the wildlife. And something in which I love nature is something which I admire. And I can go and stay inside a forest for, you know, 15, 20 days straight, right? So that is something, you know, which also, you know, created this. And uh, one thing led to the other and I travel and it's more like a meditation to me. According to me, you know, photography is more like a meditation. Well, I hope that's a real story because it makes you wonder. I hope it was not a story where no one wanted to talk to the geeky guy and that's why you had to resort to something <laughs> where you could do it all by yourself. <laughs> it's not exactly the same. And, and I don't know, a lot of people will not have the same interest, right? Normally, even in my, life, my family, if I speak more about the animals and things, you know, they will look at me staring at me. 
but I hear you've got awards and all also for your photography. I mean, that's very impressive. You had to be really good for some, to, to get something like that. Normally, I don't send these things outside. You know, I take photography is only for my own satisfaction. Right? Normally, I don't circulate it. I don't put it. But in the beginning of the Facebook days, you know, we have a common group there. We all common interest people, oil of interest, oil of photography interest people, right? So there, I posted a couple of pictures, and one of my friends sent it to a magazine in the US, and I got you know recognition for that in the US. Apart from that, you know, I don't send this too much anywhere else. And are you also one of those uh, crazy uh, photography uh, uh, lover who is very particular about his camera, the frame, the lenses, so on and so forth? Are you like a gadget freak when it comes to photography? Because you can't say it as a gadget freak, but it is more like you know the essential for a photography. You know? When you go depth into it, you understand that you know everything matters. And when you want that particular perfect shot, and you don't mind spending money on this. And I think photography is one of the most expensive and craziest hobby, you know, because you need to spend more on your gear, you need to spend more on your travels, and you don't get anything in return. Right? I've spent quite a lot of money on both these things, travel and also my gear. Mm. I'm sure, I'm sure, because I have few friends who are crazy about all of this. And yeah, it just surprises me at times, probably because obviously it's not something which I understand that well at the same time. Uh, Nandu, the last one for you. Uh, I will not ask you about the legacy because I, there, there is a lot for you to do at Prominence and probably beyond that as well. But um, let's say uh, probably uh, your vision for Prominence uh, five years down the line, 2025. What's the vision probably Nandu has for this organization? Uh, see, for Prominence, I think, you know, uh, one thing which I should be very thankful is for the team, right? So. Uh, the team was very young and energetic team, what we have on board. And uh, interesting fact is, you know, most of the uh, uh, beginning uh, staffs of prominence was not formally interviewed, right? With all the known references like you people, you know, all the associates, you know, referred a lot of people. And then, you know, with God's grace, the good team fall in place. And it is more energetic team, more youthful team is what we have. And with them, you know, we had attained a great heights, right? And... Uh, I would be very thankful for the team because, you know, they created a very good product. Normally, you know, a lot of people, even my dad used to say this, you know, when we started the factory, you know, we find it difficult to take the first product out, you know. But in our factory, it was not the case, you know. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were worked on behind this and uh, the GM, the marketing head, you know, Praveen very well, Shanzer, and a lot of, you know, we had one Mr. GKS, we had Mr. Natarajan. We had a lot of people to thank. And with this team, I think, you know, we can able to achieve greater heights and we want to be, see, our aim as prominence is to be a very good market leader in terms of good quality products, profiles in India. And we wanted to create a good benchmark in India when it comes to windows and facades. You know, that is one primary importance. And we, want, we should be known by our brand by, for, for its own quality. I think uh, I'll just add something there. I think one thing which I can proudly say prominence is known for its value system. And I don't think that's going to change at all. Probably it's coming from your dad, uh, probably it's coming from your family, but that's one thing which is very, very inherent part of this organization, whatever I have known. Um, with that, Nandu, I'd like to thank you for being on the show. Um, I mean, uh, it's, it's, you're one of those who doesn't talk much, so there is a lot more for everyone to know, and I hope all those people who are out there would have got to know a lot more about you. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Karan. I really loved it. And, you know, you've been rocking at this show. And, you know, if you didn't do this show, you know, I would have called you to and said voluntarily, can you take me an interview on this, you know? Well, you didn't have to. You had to be on the show because, as I said, the idea is to cover but some of the problems from the industry. Yeah. Five years later, 2025, hopefully if the show is still happening. And then let's review the situation where prominence has reached at that time. Sure. And there are a lot of legends out there. Please involve everybody because I want to know about the rest of the crowd. And it's a great platform to you know, understand people, you know, more better. Right. That's the entire idea. And for all of you out there, that's the entire reason why we are doing this. I hope Thank you got to know a lot more about Nandu today. Don't judge a book by its cover, as it's famously said. There is a lot behind this geeky face. There is utmost humility, a lot of knowledge and great value system which is probably the foundation of this organization itself. Um, till the time we find a more interesting guest next time around, please take care of yourself. Ensure you're following all the measures which are 
required to fight this pandemic right now. And yeah, let's come back with one more interesting person next time around. Till then, thank you, Khudafis. Take care of yourself. Tata. Thank you, Nandu. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.